Today, I'm going to talk about triangle of forces. This quite clearly involves three forces, and this is going to involve three forces in equilibrium. Well, if I have three forces, three vector forces, P, Q, and R, all in equilibrium, then their vector sum must be zero. Well, let's illustrate that. We could have a force P. If I add to that a force Q, and then add a force R, if they're going to be in equilibrium, the three forces must add up to zero. And therefore, if I start there, I must end up back where I started. I will have a triangle of forces. P plus Q plus R will form a triangle. Now that must be true whenever I have three forces which are in equilibrium. The three forces must form a triangle. Well, let's see how we can use that in practice. The three forces that I've got here are in equilibrium. Find the magnitudes of P and Q. Yes, we could use what we did in M1. We could resolve Q in that direction and vertically. We could resolve P in that direction and vertically. We could balance out the horizontal components. We could balance out the vertical components. And we would have simultaneous equations for P and Q. Fine, we could do that. But there are three forces. They're in equilibrium, so their vector sum is zero. I can draw a triangle of the three forces added together. I know that we will have a triangle because they're in equilibrium. Well, here is the triangle. And when you're drawing this, then you need to draw one force first. I think this one I would always draw perhaps the 50 first, vertical. Then Q goes off at 110 here. That means if I just look above that, and if I take a vertical line there, this part will be 70, and this part will be 45. And so when I want to draw my triangle, I know that my 50 comes down here. Q will go up there where this angle is 70. And then I can think of P coming back into the vertical if I draw just a little bit there. P coming back into the vertical at 45. So P comes back in to meet the vertical at 45. Now I've got my triangle of forces. And from that, I can just have a quick look. And if I use the sine rule, I'm going to get that 50 divided by sine 65 is equal to, let's look at Q is opposite 45, Q over sine 45. There is an equation where I can work out Q immediately. And that's equal to P is opposite 70 over sine 70. So if I draw my triangle of forces, I can work out Q straight away from that equation. I can work out P straight away from that equals 50 sine over sine 65. So I have two equations there. Work out Q immediately is equal to 50 sine 45 over sine 65. That is going to be equal to, let's make the six look a little bit better. That is going to be equal to 39 0.0103, etc., which is 39 newtons, two significant figures. Actually, no, we haven't got a G, have we? So I ought to give three significant figures, 39.0 newtons, and P is going to be equal to 50 sine 70. 
over sine 65, that comes from the sine rule line, that's equal to 51.8418, etc., which is 51.8 newtons. Quite easy. Not difficult to do it with the techniques that you had from M1 resolving, but if you spot your triangle, you have a quick, simple solution to get to the answer. You will see more about a triangle of forces if you look in your textbook M2 on pages 139 to 140.